The Clarity Study was launched in September 2020 by doctors here at the Royal Devon and Exeter Hospital to explore whether medicines used to treat inflammatory bowel disease increase the risk of contracting COVID-19. They also set out to understand whether IBD medicines could impair the protective immune response which usually follows infection or vaccination. With the support of clinical and research teams from 92 UK hospitals, more than 7,000 people with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis were recruited to the study. Almost all of these participants continue to share their data. Thanks to them, the team has a large data set to work with and can carry out meaningful analysis of vaccine response. The results so far have been very interesting and as these get circulated, they're quite rightly getting questions coming back from patients. One of the charities that's received many of those queries is Crohn's and Colitis UK. During the pandemic, we really found that the charity came into its own as a important and trusted source of information for people who were scared didn't know how um, their condition was going to affect them in terms of the COVID uh, virus. So they were really looking for, to us for trusted, up-to-date information that was going to help them manage their risk levels. Lots of people uh, with Crohn's and colitis are on a range of medications. Um, many of those medications will potentially affect their immune response and so that made people very nervous because they weren't sure whether those treatments made them more at risk of catching the virus. And if they did catch the virus, did it make them more at risk of suffering serious complications or even ending up in hospital? So there was a lot of concern around that kind of interaction between people's treatment and their risk of um, suffering from COVID. These are, of course, important questions. Accumulating data from the Clarity study and from other studies from North America and Europe now allow us to start answering some of these questions and so far the data are reassuring. The most common question is, am I more likely to get COVID because I'm taking treatment for IBD? The study has looked at whether IBD patients treated with infliximab either as a single treatment or in combination with medicines such as azathioprine or methotrexate are at greater risk of serious COVID illness. To do this, we compared infection rates in patients treated with infliximab with patients treated with vedolizumab, a drug that doesn't impair immune response to infection or to most vaccines. What we've shown is that prior to vaccination, the risk of infection and serious illness is the same in both patient groups. Other studies have confirmed these findings and shown that the risks are probably no greater than those observed in the general population. That means that patients on infliximab and vedolizumab are no more likely to get COVID than the general population. People are also saying, I've had COVID, so do I need to get vaccinated? Most people do have a strong and sustained antibody response following infection with COVID-19. However, the Clarity study has shown that prior to vaccination, a half of infliximab-treated patients had no antibody detectable two to 10 weeks after COVID-19 infection. This highlights the need for COVID-19 vaccination to give added protection, whether you've had COVID or not. For people treated with biologics and immunosuppressant drugs, this means three primary doses of vaccine and a booster dose three months after the third primary dose. Of course, with the recent arrival of the Omicron variant, this advice applies to everyone. People have also asked, will the COVID vaccine be less effective because I'm taking immunosuppressant drugs to treat my IBD? To understand the impact of IVD treatment on vaccination, we have looked at participants' antibody levels and T-cell responses after vaccination, as well as the risk of breakthrough COVID-19 infections after two doses of vaccine. Let's take antibody levels first. 
after a single vaccine dose, people taking vedolizumab had higher antibody levels than people taking infliximab. Only about one in three people taking infliximab had a strong antibody response. However, the good news is that after two doses of vaccine, more than 90% of participants had a robust antibody response, regardless of the treatment they were taking. The extra good news is that even if you're one of those patients who has a low level of antibodies following two vaccines, you're likely to have a T-cell response from the vaccines that will give you further protection to COVID. This happens regardless of whether you're on vedolizumab or infliximab. And lastly, how long does the vaccine provide protection from COVID infection? We do see antibody levels falling in all participants over time after two vaccine doses, but levels fall faster in infliximab-treated patients. 20 weeks after a second dose, half of infliximab-treated patients have very low or undetectable antibody levels. To date, about one in 20 participants have had so-called breakthrough infections, a COVID-19 infection after two doses of vaccine confirmed by a positive PCR test. These breakthrough infections are more common in younger people, those treated with infliximab, and those who receive the AstraZeneca vaccines for dose one and two. The rate of breakthrough infections is likely to increase with the Omicron variant. Which means it's important for IBD patients to get a third dose of vaccination when they're offered it. I would encourage all people treated with a biologic or immunomodulator drug to have a third dose as soon as this is offered and then a booster dose three months after the third primary dose. To date, breakthrough infections in vaccinated people have been mild with only one in a hundred people requiring hospital admission. Higher antibody levels may be needed to prevent serious COVID-19 with the Omicron variant. Fortunately, initial results from Clarity IBD have shown that antibody levels are tenfold higher following a third vaccine dose compared to levels after a second dose, regardless of which medicine you're taking. So, in conclusion, you're not at higher risk of getting COVID or having more severe disease because you're taking IBD treatment. However, if you're treated with infliximab, your antibody response might be lower and not last as long after vaccination. This doesn't appear to increase your risk of serious COVID, so keep taking your IBD medicines. If you haven't already, get vaccinated at the earliest opportunity. As soon as you're offered it, get a third and then a booster vaccine dose. And while you're at it, don't forget the flu vaccine. And lastly, for those who've agreed to remain in the extension phase of the study, thank you. We've made some really important discoveries as a result of your involvement, and we're going to keep the study going for a further 24 weeks to help us all understand how our immune systems respond to third and booster vaccine doses. So a big thank you to all the hospitals and patients taking part in this study. We really couldn't do it without you. Thank you.